Chapter 33 Duty Calls Equestria, the Crystal Express The Crystal Express sped along the tracks towards its destination. Over time, the many passengers could see the lush green grass of Equestria give way to the ice and snow of the frozen north. Giant mountains could be seen in the distance, reaching high into the sky as if to touch Celestia's sun itself. And, of course, somewhere within those mountains was an oasis of crystal, where the crystal heart kept out the cold and protected the ponies who called it home. The Crystal Empire. A former city-state which is now home to Equestria's third ruling Alicorn princess. A city displaced in time, its population previously terrorized by the tyrant king himself, Sombra. He was a little more than a memory now, the Crystal Heart having turned him into atoms thanks to the efforts of the element bearers Spike the Dragon and the Crystal Prince and Princess, Shining Armor and Cadence. Twilight had been fascinated to discover the Crystal Empire's past relations with the Changeling race, finding that they had made deals with the less hostile queens, who would get a supply of love from the heart in trade for various items of value, as well as protection against other, more hostile queens. After the Crystal Empire's return, Cadence had more than happy to create such a deal with Chrysalis, and with their protection and that of the EUP, the other queens hadn't dared approach the city aside from the occasional scout or love collector trying their luck. However, none of that was of particular concern to the three ponies sitting in first class, courtesy of Prince Armor himself. The first was Captain Vladimir Vespertilio, who sat comfortably in his seat as he watched the distant mountains out of the window, a drink and hoof. Across from him sat the two newlyweds. Captain Broadsword of Celestia Solar Guard and Lieutenant Scarlet Snow of the EUP, the latter with her head on Broadsword's shoulder as she slept the journey away. Broadsword himself gently stroked her mane as sleep threatened to claim him as well, dragging him to Luna's world of dreams. At least until Vladimir spoke. So, how was the honeymoon? Vladimir asked. Broadsword raised an eyebrow to go with his amused smirk. An entire train journey, and only now, you ask? Hey, I've been busy. You may have had two weeks in Saddle Arabia on top of your extra week now, but I only started shore leave this morning, Vladimir pointed out. That still doesn't explain the train journey. Broadsword's smirk grew. Ah, oh, just answer the damn question. Just because you're now captain of the Solar Guard and Shining's place doesn't give you free reign to be a prick. <laughs> Vladimir laughed. Uh, funny you should say that. I believe Scarlet said those exact words after I pushed her into the pool. Now Vladimir raised an eyebrow. Trying to earn a divorce already, dear Broadsword? Oh, she got her revenge. Only it was in the sea. When we were on a boat. A mile offshore. Vladimir's laugh echoed loudly throughout the cabin, stirring Scarlet from her sleep. Oh, what did I miss? She groggily asked. <laughs> Nothing, dear, Broadsword said, nuzzling the top of her head. Vladimir shook his head. Oh, well, it's good to see you lighten up for a change. What gives with that? It's called being happily married to a wonderful mare, he replied. Ah, oh, you can be sweet sometimes. Scarlet pecked him on the cheek. You should still learn how to swim, though. Vladimir spluttered as he inhaled some of his drink when he heard Scarlet's words. <coughs> <coughs> learn? You don't know how to swim? Broadsword groaned. Ugh, I know how to swim. Splashing around like a fool doesn't count as swimming. Scarlet jabbed. I was just surprised. I wasn't expecting to be dumped in the freezing cold ocean quite so suddenly. Uh-huh. So a very skeptical Scarlet Snow. Vladimir chuckled. <laughs> so it was a good honeymoon then? Yes, both of them responded, 
smiling at the memory of it. Well, I'm happy for you. Both of you. And at least now, Scarlet and Princess Cadence can share the embarrassing bits. Vladimir said with a sly smile. No, no, they can't. Nuh uh. Broadsword said, however futile it was. <laughs> we'll see, Scarlet smirked. What I want to see is Broadsword with Flurryheart. It would be interesting to see how he handles a foal, she teased. My cousin has a foal, and I am great with children, so don't you worry. Scarlet leaned back into her seat, a much softer smile on her face. That's good to know. Broadsword looked over at his wife. Scarlet, you all right? I'm perfectly fine. You don't have anything to worry about. Ah! She yawned and stretched, removing the last vestiges of her slumber. How long until we arrive? Only a couple of hours, Vladimir said. It'll be good to see Shining again. I haven't seen him since he went off to play Prince in the Empire. Scarlet chuckled. <laughs> well, we all heard about his daughter's uh, magical prowess, so... What could... Vladimir gave Scarlet a deadpan glare. If you say what could possibly go wrong, I am going to end you. The Badlands Hive Twilight's wings buzzed as she flew through the hive, Spike just keeping up a short ways behind her. After one near miss with a wall the Twilight maintained had appeared out of nowhere, they came upon the throne room at last. Dropping down onto the floor, Twilight looked up at the two large doors before her. Are you sure there was nothing on the itinerary about Mother's guest? She did say he was hours early, so maybe you looked in the wrong place? Spike gave her a deadpan look. Twilight, I've been over the list a dozen times. I have went through a couple of other scrolls I'll keep around for any note of it. I know every meeting, every visitor, and everything else that has to be kept track of around here. It's my job, after all. There was nothing, no sign of this visitor. Twilight frowned. It's strange. She so rarely keeps anything from me, and with a reluctance to talk about it earlier, something serious must be happening. Well, then why are we standing out here? The answers are right through that door. Right. Here it goes. Twilight said as she pushed the two large doors open with a massive creak. At the other end of the room, Queen Chrysalis sat on her throne. If they could tell one thing, it was that she was furious about something. A snarl was on her face, and her hooves almost cracked the ground with the pressure she was applying to the bottom of her throne. However, as soon as she saw Twilight, she tried to replace that look with a warm, motherly smile, an endeavor that was only partially successful. Twilight! Spike! I'm glad you're both here. Mother, what's going on? Twilight asked. Where's your guest? Gone. Returned to his own hive, up past the frozen north. Past the frozen north? But how? No pony's ever been up past the frozen north. Chrysalis raised an eyebrow. You just answered your own question. No pony has ever been past the frozen north, at least that we know of. Changelings, however... So there's a hive up there? I have mentioned Queen Draco before, surely? Oh, of course! She's an old friend of yours, right? You write every now and then? Or at least you do when it's possible to do so. Chrysalis nodded. Indeed. Sadly, sending messengers back and forth isn't always feasible. However, we've been friends ever since we met at what was the first Queen's Council we had both ever experienced. Back when we were barely older than nymphs. Well, it would appear that we will be getting some nostalgia. Nostalgia? Wait, you mentioned the Council has... Yes. <sighs> Queen Draco's messenger invited us to the Council, which is due to start in three days. 
Us? I'm... going to the council? Twilight's eyes lit up. Oh my gosh! The council is practically the center of Changeling society! The books I could write from the information gathered there on Changeling cultures and policies! I could... Twilight! Chrysalis broke her out of her moment. Priorities, please. Twilight blinked and then blushed with a sheepish chuckle. <laughs> right, uh, sorry. Chrysalis rolled her eyes. <laughs> Be careful, Twilight. You will find the court a dangerous place indeed, and other queens might not take kindly to your research. I'll... I'll keep that in mind. Twilight sighed in defeat. Good. Now, Spike. The dragon in question perked up at being addressed. I want you to prepare for our imminent departure. We leave tomorrow. But what about our friends? Twilight asked. I'm afraid their visit will have to be cancelled. I'm sure our drones will be kind enough to escort them back to Equestria. All right. I'll break the news to them when we're finished here. Chrysalis nodded. Now, Spike, make sure everything is organized and ready to go, if you please. Aye, aye! Spike saluted, spun on the spot, and marched out the door, closing it behind him. As soon as he was gone, Chrysalis sighed and slouched in the chair. Now he is gone, we must talk. Are you all right? You didn't exactly look happy when we came in. You spotted that, huh? It is true. I have a lot on my mind. Why? Twilight walked up and sat next to her mother. What's gotten you so worked up? Is it the council? Partially. It's more to do with who is arranging it, and why. Twilight sat attentively, simply waiting for Chrysalis to continue. It's Crudelis. Crudelis is arranging the council this time. Ah. Uh, Twilight said in understanding. So, she's got you wound up? I I'm not exactly a fan of her, but what has she done? Why has her arranging the Queen's council got you so worried? She has not done anything. Yet. But she has the biggest hive in existence, and not once in all her years has she arranged a council. Even when one is set up, she was notorious for not attending them, preferring to make alliances behind closed doors, away from the sight of the other queens. She is a puppet master. It's how she operates. Always has been. Chrysalis sighed. And yet... Here we are. Twilight looked at her mother with concern. Something tells me there's more. Chrysalis glanced towards her daughter. Attentive as always. Yes, there is more. Trudellus began to make arrangements for the council two years ago. Soon after your return. The end of the sentence turned into a growl as Chrysalis's hoof did finally begin to crack the ground. She was responsible for your near death. I know it. And now she has something planned, but I will die before I let her take you away from me. Chrysalis grabbed Twilight and pulled her into a fearful embrace, refusing to let go. I will not let her take you as she took your grandmother, Chrysalis whispered. Hey, Twilight said softly. It'll be all right. She'd be stupid to try something at the council. From what I've studied, unprovoked attacks on other queens at the council is a grievous offense. The other queens would tear her apart. Chrysalis sighed, reluctantly releasing her daughter. Yes, I suppose you are correct. But nevertheless, we must be cautious while we attend. You know, we could always not attend. Twilight suggested. No. The other queens may have important subjects to discuss. It is our duty as royal changelings to attend. 
duty calls, Twilight muttered. Then we'll just have to be careful. Plus, maybe my research mode could figure out her plans, hmm? She smiled. Chrysalis snorted. <laughs> the mighty Queen Crudelis brought down by book smarts. That would be the day. Twilight giggled. <laughs> hey, it has worked before. Besides, Cardus will be there. And you know how seriously all the drones take our safety. True, Chrysalis admitted. But I'm your mother. It's my job to worry about you. Twilight rolled her eyes. <laughs> Between you, Velvet, and Celestia, it's a miracle I can get anything done. Oh, hush you. Chrysalis playfully pushed Twilight away. Come on. We best help Spike prepare, and you need to talk to your friends. One last thing. Twilight held up a hoof. Where exactly is the council? Ah, one moment. Chrysalis's horn lit up a bright green. In front of the two mares, a giant green map of Equestria came to life, bathing the whole room in a similarly colored glow. The map scrolled to the east, moving across the ocean and into the Griffin Empire, and further it moved until it came to a rest on the border of the Griffin Empire and the very outer edges of Zebrica. The map zoomed in to a large, dome-like building in the middle of a dense forest, a small clearing separating the building from the tree line. That building? It looks ancient. Twilight noted, seeing the foliage seeking to reclaim the building for nature. The first known changeling hive. It's been there since before the pony hearth swarming event, and possibly even further that. It may even predate the lost alicorn you call Faust. Older than the princess's mother? The history that building must contain. Twilight's inner scholar was screaming like a filly. Drones from various hives keep the forest from reclaiming it, and give the structure repairs when they are needed. They also make sure the perception filter masking it is maintained. We don't want a certain daring do raiding the place like some lost ark, or some overexcited former protege of the Sun Princess. Chrysalis jabbed. I promise to behave when we get there. <laughs> Twilight chuckled. Good. Some of the other queens have likely already arrived. The First Hive, on the Edge of Zebrica The large domed structure of the First Hive lay before Queen Draco as she and her escorts approached. She could see sentries from various hives working in unison to protect the many queens that would be attending the council. Queen Draco? A voice called out, one that Draco was not particularly thrilled to hear. Queen Crudelis. She turned to meet the queen with the blood-red mane. To what do I owe the pleasure? Do I need a reason to greet another changeling queen to such a coveted occasion? Crudella stated as she approached, only to be stopped by two drones in red armor, blocking her path. Control your drones, Draco. You always have some agenda, Crudellis. As for my drones, they are performing their duties, as they should be performed, keeping me away from threats. Crudelis glared at Draco spitefully, baring her fangs slightly. Now then, if that is all, I will be on my way. Have a pleasant day. Draco nonchalantly said as she continued to walk past the other queen. Very well, Draco. But tell me, you did invite my niece, did you not? Draco stopped in her tracks before turning to glare at Crudelis. I will take that as a yes. What is it to you? Draco asked. I am organizing the council, am I not? It is useful to know the attendees. Besides, I am keen to finally meet that little daughter of hers. 
She is family, after all. In but a second, Draco was in Crudelis's face, fangs bared. <sighs> Don't you even think about touching Twilight Sparkle. Chrysalis is a friend, and I will be damn sure to protect her daughter from the likes of you. Crudella smiled innocently. Harm Twilight? Oh, Draco, I would never dream of it. I would never lay a hoof on her. Suddenly, her smile turned into a smirk. Not here, anyway. I am warning you, Crudellis. Stay away from them both. Understood? Perfectly. Draco backed off and briefly glared at Crudellis in disgust. She then turned away and continued to walk towards the building, her guards following shortly after. Crudellis didn't lose her smirk. My queen, preparations are preparing as planned. Very good. We don't want anything to ruin Chrysalis's homecoming gift now, do we? No, my queen. Crudellis chuckled. Hmm, now, what is it my niece so loves saying? She considered for a moment before it came to her. Ah, that is it. The ancient queen's smirk widened. This day is going to be perfect. <laughs> the kind of day of which I've dreamed since I was small. 